What's up guys, it's Victor. So we all know the HomePod. It's an amazing speaker made by Apple that delivers amazing high quality sound in almost any room you put it in. Well, almost any room that is. What I mean is that when you place the HomePod in a small room, such as a bedroom or a bathroom, you can really hear a very balanced sound coming from the speaker. The mids, highs, as well as the low end sound very good. However, when you place the speaker in a very big and open room with a high ceiling, such as this room, where I placed these two stereo paired HomePod speakers, then you start noticing one of the limitations of the HomePod, which is that low end. Now, this is of course, according to my taste in sound, and I love bass. And I mean, that super loud, thumping, hard pounding bass I have to have a subwoofer in almost all my current audio subs around the home and of course inside my truck. So if my speaker system doesn't cause the next major earthquake, then I'm pretty disappointed and I feel like I'm not truly experiencing the music. So this got me thinking, how can I make the home pods sound better? And that brought me to the HomePod subwoofer, which is basically just an AirPlay 2 subwoofer speaker that I put together. And today I'm going to show you how to make your neighbors hate you. All right, so the first thing you're going to absolutely need is a generation two Apple Airport Express. For context, here's what the first generation looks like and here's what the second gen looks like. The second gen basically looks like an Apple TV and it does not have that big light indicator front and center of the router. Apple doesn't make these anymore and they've said that they've stopped support for them. However, they've quietly been sending out updates for these devices, which now support AirPlay 2, which is what you're going to need to send audio to the subwoofer. I got mine off of eBay and they typically sell for around $50. The second thing you need is of course to already have an existing Wi-Fi already in place and that the placement of your subwoofer is not too far from it. When setting up your Airport Express, make sure it is completely updated with the latest firmware and set it up as a network extender for your existing network. There are many videos out there that show you how to set this up and it's really super easy. So I'm not gonna waste your guys' time here with that. But once that is set up, it'll mesh into your network and you'll be ready to go to use that as an AirPlay 2 device. Lastly, you need your subwoofer with the appropriate cabling. The subwoofer will of course need to have its own separate power, which is basically any modern subwoofer that connects to a home theater system. The one I'm using is a Klipsch R12SW. When I originally bought this, it was $230, but it looks like it went up to $250 now. Now, the reason why I chose this one is for three reasons. One, it allows you to connect to it via an RCA cable, which is what you're going to need to be able to plug it from your Airport Express. The Airport Express outputs via a 3.5 millimeter jack, but you can adapt that into an RCA cable using various methods. But I just went ahead and purchased this 3.5 millimeter RCA from Amazon for $6. Rip Radio Shack. Make sure your cable is also long enough to reach a subwoofer from wherever you're plugging it into. Second, it has a low pass crossover and phase controller, which you're going to need since you won't have a receiver to be able to control settings like those from. The low pass crossover will enable you to set your subwoofer to play audio within a certain frequency. Always keep this at the lowest because I really only need this speaker to help with the absolute low frequencies. Turning it up may cause the audio sound muddled since now the speaker is being set to play at higher frequencies and that can cause other problems like the bass clipping and so on. But you can play around with it and get it set the way you want it. The phase controller is another thing you'll play around with, which is basically the direction in which the low end is going to spread. Now, the HomePods have a 360 degree audio design. So depending on where you have it placed, you'll want to match it in the general direction where you'll perhaps be listening to it the most. Lastly, I got this subwoofer because it features an auto on off feature because I don't want to have to go up and physically turn on and off the speaker whenever I want to use it. So this just makes things more simpler and more convenient. The subwoofer will sense when it is being used and take a second to turn on and then go to sleep automatically when it is not being used after some time. Basically kind of acting like the other home pods. So I just leave it set on auto and it sets. And that's it. You're all set and ready to use your subwoofer with AirPlay 2. You can select it along with your other AirPlay 2 devices and it'll begin playing synchronous audio. Under my list of AirPlay devices, you see I have it listed as main pods subwoofer. And check it out, you can even independently change the volume of the subwoofer. But who am I kidding? I'm just going to leave it turned all the way up. 
I'm actually really surprised by how well this works. My Airport Express is bridged wirelessly, and keep in mind that the router supports up to 802.11n. I was worried that I would experience some lag in between each of the AirPlay devices, but they actually sync up perfectly, and the subwoofer supplies that rich bass that I was missing in this room. If you ever start to experience problems with it, then definitely check to make sure that your Airport Express is not too distant from your Wi-Fi. And if possible, try to hard connect it using a current router or a switch. If you're unable to do that from where it's placed, then I would recommend buying a power over ethernet adapter. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions, comment it down below. If you also check the description, I provide you guys links with everything that I'm using for my current AirPlay 2 subwoofer setup. So if you have anything other in mind that maybe you want to use, then comment down below. Let me know what you're going to be using for your subwoofer AirPlay 2 configuration. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you guys want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one.